Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about cranial nerve number seven, facial. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Check out ninjanerd.org. All of our notes and illustrations are available for these lectures for you guys to utilize and study from. Now let's get started here as we continue on a neuro, focusing on our facial nerve. So with cranial nerves, we've been talking about them a lot. We've been talking about are they sensory or are they motor or are they both? And in this case for facial, this type of nerve is a both. That means we're going to have a sensory component and we're going to have a motor component. So as we move into what is the function of the facial nerve, I have a couple different diagrams here drawn from us. So when we look at where the facial nerve comes out, it's this dark blue nerve right here. It's coming out basically almost at the lateral portion, close here to the ear. And as we can see, the nerve comes out and it goes basically all across the face, right? Kind of spiders across the face here. And we said that function is both. So a couple of things that this does is it helps with one, facial expressions. Two, it also helps with tasting anterior of the two thirds of the tongue. And it also has some gland incorporated within it. So we have some gland functions, three different glands that I denoted right here that we can see this brown and then we can also see them denoted here in this yellow circle with uh, orange outline. These three different glands that we're just going to talk about real quickly. So we have three different glands. First one is going to be the one right here above the eye. That's our lacrimal gland. And this gland is going to help with tears or keeping the eye nice and moist, nice and wet. The second gland is the one right here under the tongue, okay? That one is called our sublingual. And then we have a third one right here underneath, right kind of under the jaw, under the mandible a little bit, it's called the submandibular gland. And the sublingual and the submandibular help with secretion and production of saliva. So when you look at the function, we said, okay, facial expression does a little bit of taste where we have our sensory, does some functions with our glands. And when we look at this, big picture that I drew over here, we can see that I wrote five nerve roots, there's six muscles that are involved, three glands. We spoke already of the three glands, and we said how it spiders across the face, so we're quickly going to touch on those different branches or different nerve roots, as well as what muscles are incorporated. While we do that, we're also going to talk a little bit about the assessment, because the function of all of these muscles there implies the assessment of this nerve. How are we going to assess our patient on if this nerve is working properly? So let's quickly walk through this, and I'm going to use my blue marker to denote the assessment as well so we get a better idea. So let's just put this right here, that our assessment is also going to be in blue over there. Okay. All right, Nishar, so when we're looking at our patients here and we're looking at them face on, we're going to assess what's going on and we're going to talk about what different nerve roots are interacting with which different muscle groups here. So the facial nerve has one branch, it's temporal, right? So it comes across, comes up and over. We can see that kind of drawn here and it interacts with this muscle right here. This muscle right here is called our frontalis and that's the one that allows for our eyebrows to be raised up and also wrinkle the forehead. Then we go down and we move on to the zygomatic branch, and the zygomatic branch interacts with this muscle right here, this obicularis oculi, right? This muscle that's going around the eye, the sphincter, and that allows us to close our eye. Then we can move on down to the buccal. This branch right here is going to interact with a couple different muscles. First one is going to be the orbicularis oris. This one right here around the lips, all right, it's going to allow us to close our mouth. And then we have two that work together, the zygomaticus minor and the zygomaticus major. These, as you can look here, if they are going to contract, they're going to be able to pull up this lip, right? And it's going to help us smile. Moving down here to the mandibular, we have the mandibular branch that goes with, again, the orbicularis oris, which is the one that's going to close our lips. And then we have the buccinator. The buccinator is right in here. It's this little green muscle. And what we can see here is this is all also going to allow to compress the lips, right? So think about when you're going to like whistle or pucker up. There's one of the muscles that helps you do that. And then the last branch we're looking at here is the cervical branch. It's coming all the way down here to the neck. And this one is going to work with our platysma. This is the muscle right here that starts from the, basically the base of the chin, pulling all the way down. So this is going to allow us to frown. Okay, it's also that muscle that works all in the neck here. 
So when we look at this diagram, we can see that we have these different branches of the facial nerve that go into different muscles of the face in order for those different muscles to have different type of movements and types of functions. So if we bring it back into what we're going to be doing in nursing as we go in to assess the patient, there's a couple things we need to look at when we're assessing the patient. Yes, there's certain things that we can focus on. Uh, are they having issues with their glands? Are they having issues with their taste? Because we can do the anterior tasting with the tongue, with the sweet and the, the salty or bitter. But we really want to focus on too is the facial expression. So when we're assessing our patient, the first thing we can do is just look at our patient while they're talking, while we're assessing them. Maybe we're listening to them or doing something else, but we're gonna just know, is there any type of asymmetry? The face should be symmetrical, and, it, and if it's not, is there a reason it already is like that, or are we going to investigate further? So the first thing we're doing is, is the face symmetrical? And then what we're also going to do is ask them to do all of these different movements, right, of the face. Can you raise your eyebrows for me? Can you puff out your cheeks? Can you close your eyes really tight? When they close their eyes really tight, we can place our thumbs and pull up a little bit, see if they can go against resistance to keep their eyes closed. And when we do all of these things, have them puff out their cheeks, have them close their eyes really hard, we're assessing to see are they able to do it and is there weakness or is there a lack of symmetry on either side? Because if we're noticing that, then we need to further investigate, okay, what might be the cause of this? So if we note a failure within the assessment, what could be going on with this patient? And we could start with looking at, did the patient recently have some sort of trauma? Did they have some sort of head injury? Did they have some sort of surgery that may be causing a, a partial paralysis for the moment that may return later? So is there an issue with that that we're assessing them and saying, okay, this patient had surgery. Okay, this patient had head trauma. So we're gonna keep a note on that. This is something that they've come in with and we're expecting, we're monitoring. Next thing we can think about also, is there some sort of compression on the nerve? Does a patient have, maybe they don't know, some sort of tumor that when we do a CT of the head, we see this little compression of the nerve and then we're able to, okay, this patient's having some sort of asymmetry or decrease in weakness or function within the face because they're having this compression on the nerve. We can also think about inflammation at this point. Is the patient having some sort of inflammation of the nerve? When there's inflammation on the nerve, we can have that decrease in function. This can be secondary to other disease processes like Lyme's disease or sarcoidosis, where the patient's having a decrease in that function, and that's causing that asymmetry or that issue with the movement on one side of the face. And then we can also move into the two diagnoses that the patient may have that they aren't aware of or they aren't used to it or it's going to be a new diagnosis for them. One is if this is also very rapid onset, all of a sudden they kind of like, they're like, I don't know, I went to bed normal, woke up, my face kind of looks like this. This is one thing that we're looking at is Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy is often one type of symptom or manifestation that patients aren't sure if they're having a stroke or is this Bell's palsy. And we can go in and assess them and look, make sure we can still get a head CT if we want to clear them. But with that facial weakness, it will hopefully recur over time, it does take some time, but it does have that rapid onset. All of a sudden there's weakness on the side of the face. Cause is unknown, but sometimes it's secondary to a herpes simplex flare-up, right? So a patient's gonna have some type of flare-up and that could be affecting the nerve in there. Along with another condition called Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, which can be a flare-up of the varicella zoster virus. So what we're looking at here is a patient not only has some type of weakness, they can also get lots of painful vesicles or ear, ear pain because we have that nerve coming out near the ear. So they can have some of that ear pain on one side. Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, similar kind of manifestation with that weakness, that kind of asymmetry on the face. And that's it, Ninja Nerd. So when we look at these patients and we're assessing them, we're noticing some asymmetry. The biggest concern is stroke. Okay, once that is ruled out, we can also then further investigate, is there something else going on with this patient? So I hope this made sense. I hope you learned something from this video. And as always, until next time.